two months later with what's arguably the wickedest laptop I've ever featured on this channel, the MSI Radar GE78. Let's go! Yo, hope you're good people, it's man like Jamal back again with another gaming laptop review. This time we're outside with the MSI Radar GE78. Now, those of you that have been with the channel for a long time, you know I'm addicted to my MSI Radar devices. I used to have a GE66 myself and then I think I used to have another GE66 with a 12th gen processor. This GE78 is the 17 inch version of those mini Raiders that I used to have and this one has come packing with 13th gen i9 processors matter of fact let me just go straight on with the specs real quick now as man said you got an i9 processor in there 32 gigabytes of ram 2 terabytes of pcie 4.0 SSD, NVMe flavor. You don't know the vibes already on that one right there. We also got an NVIDIA RTX 4090 in a laptop format. 24 gigabytes of VRAM though, bossing around all the graphics in this little piece of laptop right here. So we are not messing around. We are at the very high end of the gaming laptop price range. Now starting off with the ports, we got two USB-A 3.2 Gen 2 ports and we got a USB-C port which is also USB 3.2 Gen 2 but this one's also got DisplayPort output and it's got PD fast charging. Now for the screen we don't have any OLED which is kind of a surprise considering the fact that we are at this £3,000 plus price mark but you do get a 17 inch IPS panel, 2K resolution, 2K plus actually because it's 16 by 10 so instead of it normally being 2560 by 1440p this one is 2560 by 1600 and it's also got 240 hertz of refresh rate baked in there as well fam so if you want to do the esports warrior thing at 2k resolution you're pretty much good to go on the left hand side you got a 3.5 millimeter combination headphone jack and microphone port sd card reader full size as well so straight from your camera into the laptop itself uhs2 speeds on that sd card port too and you got a usb c port which is up to thunderbolt 4 speeds now on the back of the thing going from left to right, you got the Ethernet port, you got HDMI 2.1, you've also got another USB-C port, but that one's 3.2 Gen 2 and also supports DisplayPort output, but doesn't have PD fast charging in this one, just data. And then you've got another port there, that's just for plugging in the laptop and charging it and them thing there. Now, one of my favorite features has obviously got to be the RGB panel on the front. That thing is different like as soon as you take this laptop up and you boot it up everyone is going to be staring at it because of the light show and the fact that it matches up with the rgb in the keyboard as well icing on the cake fam only msi and i think i've seen asus do this too now before i go into gameplay i just wanted to show you the sticker bomb and the rgb lighting that's going on on the back panel of the screen fam that's just them little touches that msi love to do because Now onto the gameplay, it goes without saying that that combination of a 13th gen i9 and an NVIDIA RTX 4090 laptop version with the max GPU power 170 watt thing, whatever it's called, is going to kill anything at 2K resolution max settings. We're doing a little piece of, oh, what's this game called again? Flipping Helldivers 2. Fam, yeah, max settings, easily played, easily playable. You can see the frame rate up in the top left there. Let's jump onto something else. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I personally need a reboot of SSX. But until then, man's going to play the Tony Hawk's reboot. Obviously, max settings. I don't think I've ever, as a child, played Tony Hawk's at 240 frames per second wickedly smooth cuz like 60 frames is obviously more than enough for tony hawks but having it at this high frame rate 
didn't really make me any better, but yeah, it just looked good, man. It was just giving me low-key eye candy. You know them ones there? Now, when it comes to graphics and hard-to-play games, you don't know we got to throw Kena Bridge of Spirits in a mix. Any computer that can play Kena Bridge of Spirits in high settings, regardless of the resolution, is a serious gaming computer. This thing was doing 2K plus high frame rates easily without sweating, cause definitely a wicked laptop. Now, as you can see, this laptop's been running fine throughout the whole video, but all of a sudden, man loaded up snow runners, started changing up some of the graphical settings, and then the whole computer just shut down on me. I was hella confused. I thought the battery had run out or something. I don't know what happened. When I turned it back on, it started running back as normal, like nothing ever happened. Bear weird there. Now, once SnowRunners was obviously back up and running, max settings, max resolution, I think SnowRunners is secretly a quite demanding game when all the graphics are set to max because not, it's not that I wasn't getting high frame rates. I was getting above 60, but like I thought I would be getting maybe 200 frames per second on such a simplistic looking game. So kind of weird that I was only getting just under 100 with it. Now, of course, Man of Man had to get some Dirt 5. The way that Dirt 5 does their graphical video settings is proper weird. Like, you got everything on automatic. You don't even know what's going on. You can manually set it all to high and then set the resolution to native. So that's what I've done here. And yeah, the frame rate is frame rate in fam. This is the Dirt 5 experience. Unfortunately, I'm only shooting this whole video at 4K 30, so 30 frames per second is the maximum you're gonna see here. But trust me, mad smooth gameplay coming from Dirt 5 here, which is actually quite a decently easy, well-optimized game to play, no matter what system you're playing it on anyway. Now, of course, you don't know we have to play some Fallout 4. I haven't even finished watching the rest of the series yet, but Fallout 4 has had some updates. It's looking wicked, especially at 2K. I've noticed with Fallout 4, it is locked to 60 frames per second, no matter what you do, fam. But it's very easily, well, it's not well optimized, but because it's such an old game, even the Steam Deck can run it at 60 frames per second on whatever resolution it's on. So yeah fam it runs nice it looks nice just wait to show you what it looked like on this computer really now we've clearly established that it can run any game that you throw at it in max settings at high frame rates but one thing i also use this laptop for mainly is video editing on the go cuz car it's not every day sit up at your desk with your back straight on the gaming chair sometimes go outside sometimes literally just be in a different room and one thing i really like is the power of this gpu for video editing i can't stress enough how long it is when you've got a weak powered laptop or just a laptop without dedicated graphics at all and you're trying to edit 4k content and the footage is just sticking the footage is not moving everything is lagging and it just makes your content creation process a lot harder whereas with this thing i know that i can edit a video within an hour because it's not the computer that i'll be waiting on it's my own video edited editing skill level kind of thing in it so yeah man definitely a win with the video editing performance for 4k video files now in terms of things that i haven't really touched on because man's done a lot of gaming and a lot of video editing the keyboard itself feels really good to type on little tactile thing not quite mechanical obviously because it's a laptop keyboard but it gets the job done and it doesn't feel terrible when you're typing even got the little number key section on the right hand side if i do want to do a little bit of activity and get some work done the touchpad now is it's okay i'm not mad at it i'm not super excited by it either it feels as responsive as it needs to feel but i've literally got it turned off now and i'm using an external mouse because i prefer that way more than using the touchpad um speakers actually caught me slipping like the speakers in this are actually quite good but when the fan in the laptop is on turbo mode the fans are definitely louder than the speakers can reach when playing games so you're definitely going to need some headphones or some kind of earphone that can isolate that fan noise if you're trying to game with max spinning um apart from that though it's just the battery life and we know what the situation is guys if you really want to get any gaming on this thing without being plugged in you need to be playing some 2d indie game um and then maybe 
maybe you'll get about two to three hours of battery life. But if you're playing anything AAA like what I've just shown you, yeah, you're look you're looking at two hours maximum, one hour thirty maximum, um, and basically less than that. But apart from that, this this thing is giving more desktop replacement than it is given laptop because of that battery kind of thing. Like I've used Chromebooks and Chromebooks and MacBooks just seem to be untouchable in the battery department. We're gonna have to wait for Windows to do something with the way it sips battery profusely because <laughs> but anyway let me know what you guys think about this laptop it is one year old now and they have got the 14th gen version which is basically the same thing with the intel 14th gen processors but in terms of performance yeah this thing would rival some desktops that i put it up against so i'm pretty much happy with it but let me know you guys thoughts in the comments section below subscribe and like if you haven't already it really helps the channel out and hopefully i'll catch you guys in the next one